Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangie reporting, uh, doing political commentary is more like it for the media speaks. Um, today is a show for one person. Are you that one person? Well, maybe not. If you're not, then uh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Make sure you share the video anyway. Um, I got a request from one of the best supporters this show's ever had, Angela. She has been wanting to hear about Jade Helm, and she donates to the show. You can do so as well. And contact me at the correct views at hotmail.com. When you become somebody that donates to a show, you have a voice in what this show does. And Angela, this is for you. Here's your Jade Helm show. I'm also going to cover the mission statement of this show as well as Rand Paul announcing his candidacy. So uh, make sure you stay with me. I wasn't going to post today, but I have never had a video go this viral before. Um, The Fukushima video is uploading. I have part one and part two locked at 301 views, which is what YouTube does when you have so many views that it can't even add them anymore. And I also have somebody that went back and took my Fukushima Hillary Clinton news from 3-26-15. Very big day for the show. So I'm going to go ahead and do exactly what my listeners are asking for. And uh, then we're going to get to what is the mission statement of the show. So we will handle them in order. Um, Oathkeepers.org. Jade Helm. Operation Jade Helm, should we be worried? This is dated April 7th. For those of you that don't know, this is originally written by Chuck Baldwin. For those of you that don't know, Jade Helm is a military exercise. It's going to take a couple of months to do. They have labeled Texas and certain other parts of the country as hostile territories. Let's see... I covered this once on Saturday, uh, the Saturday edition, every Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on TheMediaSpeaks.com. I covered this on the Saturday edition. There's two sides to this. One, our government and the military is practicing to bring in martial law to force all of us at gunpoint to become a more fascist society. Is that possible? Yes. However... Two, it is possible that the military and the authorities need to be ready to act immediately to any given situation. And if you don't practice those situations, if you're not ready for those situations, then when they happen, you are not going to be prepared. So if you don't have exercises like this, what you have is unpreparedness. And I don't think anybody listening to this would like to see America grossly unprepared for such an emergency. Is this something for our own good, or is this something nefarious? That's what I was asked. And the answer is, I don't know, but I can tell you how to find out how. Is this just, uh, let's say we have a backyard and we're going to have a snowball fight. So we separate two sides. Mine's America, yours is Iran. Let's start throwing snowballs. You have to designate some area in the drill as the bad zone. They pick Texas. People in Texas have had a problem with having been chosen for such a great distinction, if you will. Um... I don't know if this is more. I don't know. Is this a drill or is this a preparation for martial law? Is this a preparation for fascism? Here's how you find out how. Someone listening to this knows somebody that's in this drill. He might be some low-level private. He might be an admiral. He might be a sergeant. He might be a cook. Somebody listening to this knows or knows somebody that's in this drill. I need you to get this video to that person. What is Jade Helm? You tell me. You're part of it. You're doing it. Is this something nefarious? You can can, uh, let me know anonymously. I do not give my sources. To anybody watching this, the NSA, here's a one-finger salute for you. 
If you think that I will give up my sources, you can rot in hell. I will not, even under court order. I refuse. I've just said it. Let me know. What do you think this is? Do you think this is something nefarious, or is this simply America being prepared for the world that we live in? Here's the report from Oath Keepers. For two months this summer, the U.S. Special Operations Command uh, will conduct realistic military training, Operation Jade Helm 15, in seven southwestern U.S. states, California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. Military spokesmen say that the operation is merely a standard training exercise designed to prepare Special Forces troops for warfare overseas. Is that true? I am not a conspiracy theorist. If I tell you that something is, it is. It's the correct views. It's not the correct maybes. It's not the what ifs. I'm not saying that this is something nefarious, but I am saying that the way that the government didn't want to address this until it became something that absolutely had to be addressed, that is, in fact, something that alarms me. Hello, Tim, I just saw you log in. That is something that alarms me rather greatly. Um, it could have been handled a lot better. It says, according to the London Daily Mail, Army spokesman Lieutenant Colonel Mark Lestoria said, this exercise is routine training to maintain a high level of readiness for Army Special Operations Forces because they must be ready to support potential missions anywhere in the world at a moment's notice. Um, is that true? Yeah. The last time we didn't prepare, we sent our men and women on a boat over in Fukushima, Japan after the earthquake, and they got juiced. And today they're facing cancers, they're facing heart problems, they're facing brain tumors, they're facing a shutdown in life. Why? Because America wasn't freaking prepared. How many of you remember what George Bush did when Katrina happened? FEMA, grossly unprepared for the realities and logistics of a real world disaster. So, yes, we need to be prepared for this. However, could this be a step in the direction that takes the Fourth Amendment and other rights away from the American citizenry? Could this be practicing for that? Of course it could. That's why I'm on air right now. It says units participating in the operation include Army Green Berets, Navy SEALs, USAF Special Forces Operations Command, USMC Special Operations Command, USMC Expeditionary Units, Army 82nd Airborne Division, and interagency partners, whatever and whoever that is. They don't even define it. Over 1,200 troops will participate. Now, do you mean to tell me that there is not anybody listening to my voice and I get thousands of hits that can find me a couple of these 1,200 troops? BS, I know you can make it happen. That's why you're the best audience in America. For purposes of the exercise, the states of Utah and Texas and parts of Southern California are designated as hostile. Local mayors and county commissions have been notified of the operation and have already signed off on it. Would the mayors be willing to sign off on something that they thought was going to hurt their people? I doubt it. Could the mayors have been lied to in such a way that they don't know that they're signing off on something bad? Who knows? Maybe. Um... I will say this, the fact that Utah, Texas, and parts of Southern California were designated as hostile, and they are actually a, a, a wealth of conservative-minded pro-gun people, does lead you to believe that it is possible that they are really looking at these people as hostile, when really they're just constitutionalists. I understand people's concern here. It says, to be sure, the U.S. military often conducts off-base exercises. There is nothing new about that. However, this operation might be the largest off-base training exercise on the U.S. mainland. It is certainly one of the most aggressive. It goes on that in this exercise, special forces troops will practice all sorts of activities, including extractions, 
that would be pulling people out of homes. Searches and seizures, uh, that is anti-Fourth Amendment, unless they're doing it as an act of, uh, to prevent an act of war from somebody who is not a citizen. Urban camouflage, that is hiding in cities, and the guy says, etc. According to the Houston Chronicle, among the planned exercises, soldiers will attempt to operate undetected among civilian populations. Now again, this could be beneficial because if you don't hide among the citizenry, then you will not know how prepared the citizenry is to let you know of a possible problem. However, we also know the training exercises have led to false flag events, have led as a cover for actual bombings and actual murders. Much of this was facilitated by the government. Is this one of those? Get a hold of those 1,200 troops, would you? It says residents in turn will be asked to report suspicious activity in order to gauge the effectiveness of the soldiers. That's not a bad idea. It says the London Daily reports that special forces set to swarm southwest and operate undetected among civilians in massive military exercise. According to Yusko, Yusokan, the exercises will only be conducted between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. It'll be interesting to see if this, uh, if something happens between those, those hours. And if so, is it a coincidence or is it a false flag planted by them? Unfortunately, it's going to be accused as a false flag, whether it is or not, if it takes place between that particular time zone. Or time, you know what I mean, time duration. It says, pray tell, how difficult will it be for special forces troops, the best of the best, to operate undetected and blend in during the middle of the night? That part of the military's description makes no sense at all to me. Well, it does to me, because if we were going to be hit by someone, it would very likely be at night. Um, very often, real terrorists, not the false flags, they tend to operate, like now I'm on at 4.12 in the morning, it tends to operate when not a lot of people are awake because there's less chance of being seen. So it does make sense to me, Mr. Baldwin. It says, we already have millions of taxpayer dollars being spent on mass media advertising that tells people that if you see something, say something. Now we are going to practice reporting suspicious activity? I'm not sure that that's what it is, Mr. Baldwin. There's a chance that this is a training exercise, and if they act like terrorists and get caught, it proves that society is awake and seeing something and saying something. If they do not, if they can pull this off by acting like your average terrorist, then it means that society is not watching for suspicious activity. Is this good or bad? I don't know, it hasn't started yet. Of course it has the potential to be bad. It says, believe it or not, there was a time in the country when such an idea would have been considered abhorrent by the American people as resembling Nazi Germany or Red Russia too much. Then again, most of our World War generation has World War II generation has passed, hasn't it? That is true. It says the internet is abuzz with speculation that these exercises are not designed to prepare U.S. troops for overseas operations, but are actually designed to prepare U.S. troops for aggressive operations against the American citizenry. And that is, of course, what we all fear, which is why you're listening to me talk right now. It says, at the risk of sounding paranoid, ever since 9-11, our federal government has targeted America's homeland for all sorts of surveillance, spying and snooping, etc. The NSA routinely collects virtually all electronic communications, telephonic transmissions, etc. from the American citizenry. In other words, they've brought a lot of this doubt that we all have upon themselves by the way that they have treated us since 9-11. The U.S. Congress and federal courts have become nothing more than rubber stamps for an executive branch of government determined to know the most intimate details of every person in the nation. The United States now has the dubious distinction of being the most spied upon country in the history of the world. That is true. For the first time in U.S. history, we have a Northern Command, a full active military division, which is the 3rd Infantry Division, assigned to the continental United States. We have the Department of Homeland Security, which has turned our local and state agencies into miniature military units. 
and has armed them with all sorts of military weaponry and equipment, including some of the most sophisticated intelligence equipment gathering you know, capabilities in the world. Of course, it goes on to talk about the Patriot Act. We all know how bad that is and uh, how we've lost the trial by jury and habeas corpus. We know that. It says the whole idea of practicing extractions, which is a nice word for kidnappings, in the U.S. city sends chills up my spine, and I agree. Are they practicing to extract possible militants who could invade our country, or are they practicing to come after Joe Citizen, who has every God-given right to have his gun? That's what we're talking about. It says, please take a look at what is happening in this country. Our local state police are being militarized, and it goes on to all the problems that we are seeing. Uh, it's like a whole paragraph of them. We know. It says, I think the American people have good reason to be paranoid. I agree. I totally agree. I am not against the article here. That's not what I'm saying. I'm asking questions, and there are people that have answers. We cannot have the answers. If someone tells you they have the answers, they're lying, because we don't know the scope of this yet, nor do we know the purpose. But we do know how to find out, and I need those people to get a hold of me. You listening to this, you, you on low def, you on high def, you can make this happen. It says, I posted a few preliminary thoughts on my Facebook page regarding this subject before writing this column, and here are some of the comments from his followers. Uh, James says, Jade Hell, Jade is blue, Helm is German for helmet, blue helmet, UN blue helmets. That's interesting. We shouldn't even be in the UN. Uh, Jeannie says, their supposed reasons for this exercise don't make sense. They won't be blending in with civilians in third world countries. The only purpose I can see is force against us one day. They're trying to see whether or not they can blend in. And if they can, then terrorists can. I, 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 I don't agree with Jeannie there. Mark, just because we are a bit paranoid doesn't mean uh, there isn't someone out to get us. He thinks he's Kurt Cobain. Jason, the exercise itself is not a direct danger. It is, however, practice to acclimate soldiers and citizens to military actions in neighborhood. Is that true or is that not true? He writes, uh, I invite readers to like my Facebook page and I post comments on my Facebook page that do not make it into my column. I go to my page app, blah, 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 blah. blah. It says, uh, I realize, writes Chuck Baldwin, that it, it is extremely difficult for Americans to believe that their own government could actually turn against them. And I'm sure that many people will tell me that to think otherwise is alarmist and extremist. But isn't that exactly what the citizens of every country overtaken by its own government have said, that it can't happen here, have been the last words of millions of people? All of that is true. I'm not here to shoot down Baldwin. He... He could be as right as he is wrong, but he's missing the other side of it, which I hope I've given you. What is it? Is it a takeover? I'm not going to say it's not. It could be preparations for a takeover. There are people that know, and I'm counting on you listening to this to get those out to, the, out to those people. I have covered both sides of this for you. The last paragraph here, it says, The fact is the vast majority of us cannot know what is the true oper in intention of Operation Jade Helm and what it might actually be. And that includes the military personnel who are commanding and participating in it. No, but they do know what they have been told, and they know whether or not they believe what they've been told. They're not stupid. He writes that I am convinced of this much. The federal government and its propaganda ministry in the national news media almost never tell us the truth. For that much, I am absolutely certain. And you know what? I agree with him on that point. So... It's now spread into Ohio, by the way, for those of you that don't know. This could be something very, very bad. Or this could be something that is a benefit in case of a worst case scenario. Here's what I'm saying. If they release the findings of this, that will give some credence to the fact that they are on our side. The less information they give, the less you can trust it. Now, I don't mean the nuts and bolts of what they've learned. Of course, you can't give that to the citizenry. But the rest of it. Um, people participating in this. I'm looking for a lot of activity in the comment line of this video. 
And then, I mean, that's where we are. It's oathkeepers.org where I got this article. They do some of the best work that you can imagine. They keep the, the authority and the populace on common ground. They remind the oath, uh, oath Keepers. They're called that because they remind those in authority here at 420 exactly what it is that they promise to do and the oath that they have. Friends, it is what it is. It is. Um, as I'm going live here, everybody is a buzz about the Rand Paul, so I'll talk about him before I jump off and go into the mission statement here. Rand Paul has announced his candidacy, and I personally am rather happy to see that because... I don't think that Rand Paul holds a candle to his father. I really, really do not. I think that Rand Paul is nowhere near his father. However, he's not evil. You hear people say, oh, I chose the lesser of two evils. Hillary is evil. Jeb Bush is evil. Uh... Rand Paul is not evil. So, I mean, you can vote for Rand Paul in good conscience. You can't very well vote for uh, Hillary Clinton in good conscience. I know that there are uh, more traditional conservative Republicans that are not happy that Rand Paul has announced his candidacy because they know how divisive it is. They know that people like me will bend enough to vote for Rand and those of you that have criticisms of Rand, let me tell you now, we agree. There are people that are going to bend enough to vote for Rand that will not do so for Ted Cruz, will not do so for Rubio, will not do so for Jeb Bush. I am one of those people. And I terrify the Republican establishment. But I've got news for you. I am not a Republican. I am a Libertarian. So I don't have a problem with throwing the Republican candidate under the bus if I don't like him. And right now, the only Republican candidate that doesn't make my stomach turn is Rand Paul. So uh, Rand Paul, God bless you. Uh, hopefully you don't accidentally elect Hillary. But I mean, what's the option? To not have somebody who is right run? We don't want that. So I mean, again, right is in right and wrong, not as in left and right. And that brings us to the end here, guys. Instead of a dumb deal of the day, I'm going to do a mission statement. I've been doing this for over three years. YouTube destroyed the first uh, hundred and some videos that I had. They've been obliterated. Um, I've been doing this for a while. And I am now trying to leave the job that I am at. I'm a DJ. It's fine. Um, I'm not the kind of DJ I used to be. I used to actually get to play good music. Now I have to sneak good music in. I respect all the people I work with, but I'm looking to do something different. Um, I'm going to have to try to make like twenty five, twenty six thousand dollars $26,000 a year to be able to quit the job I'm at. But if there's going to be a mission statement where I'm at, then friends, that's what I'm trying to do. I, I, I want to make this listener funded. Would I sell it to a syndication of some kind? Yes, I would if I had to. But then I'm answerable to... All of these um, organizations and businesses and everything else. And you say something that makes, uh, you say you have Gerber baby food, you, they get a fucking diaper up their ass. Next thing you know, uh, you, you've lost your sponsor because, you know, you just said fuck on air like I did. Now you've got no sponsor. If you guys fund me, then I'm answerable to you. And you wouldn't have even found this show if you didn't already think like I did. If I'm not dropping F-bombs every 30 seconds like I'm a rapper, then you really don't care if I drop one every once in a while. If I really anger you in some way, but you agree with most of what I said, maybe you will donate, maybe you won't, but you're not going to have me knocked off the air. You're still going to roughly support what I do. That is not the case with big-scale advertisers. And if this doesn't work, I'm going to have to go after more big-scale advertisers. And that is a slippery slope if you're not careful. So, I mean, I've got, what, how many videos do I have up right now? 413 videos are up. You know whether or not you like me by now. Um, if you do, then support me. Because 
I'm trying to make this my full-time job. And once I do, I'll do it three hours a day, five days a week. It'll either be Monday through Friday or Tuesday through Saturday because I'm already on air Saturday. That would make sense. And as a commercial driver for nine years of my life, which was nine wasted years and I'll never get back, uh, I know that when you're driving around, nothing is worse than not having news on Saturday and Sunday. I get it. So I, I, I'd go one of those two ways. But none of that can happen without you. If, if you don't donate to the show and find some way where I can earn about 25 grand a year, which is not a fortune that is still low on the income bracket, I'm not being greedy here, um, I'm going to have to just squeeze it in like I do now. Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Thursday. I hope I'm not too tired, blah, 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 because I work. I want to do this five days a week three hours a day, just like Rush and Hannity and Michael Savage and Alex Jones and blah, 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 blah. Um, if you want that to happen, then please donate. You can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com. There's no big, huge mission statement here. I'm not going to reinvent myself for everyone as if I was Beyonce. Oh, I'm Sasha, no. Um, I'm the libertarian long-haired guy that talks about Fukushima. He's anti-nuke. He's pro-freedom. He'll give you the one finger salute and tell you you're allowed to do the same thing to him. I don't back down. I do not capitulate. I can be a real SOB, but when I say something, I know it's right. That's why it's called the correct views. And if you support that, if you like that I do that, then please donate to me so that I can make this my job. That's my mission statement, friend. There's no great mystery here. I'm as real as can be. Because if I'm not real and I don't have my credibility, then I have a camera and I'm an idiot. And I think I'm a little more than that. Good night, friends. God bless. Thank you for listening. And uh, there's your Jade Helm, Rand Paul mission statement show. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look up all the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. And let Sticker Junkie know you heard about him here. Thanks. Bye.